right, so we saw earlier I'm at uh, my family's house. See the 240Z parked out there in the driveway. This is actually my 73 Honda CB350F. Uh, actually, it could be a 74. Let me see. Doesn't say. Oh, yeah, it is. Uh, 73 the cb 350f model of course this is all 100 percent made in japan from honda well it's just the, the right gross weight certainly not that heavy but this is one of the first uh four-cylinder motorcycle out there one of the smallest cc i think even till this day i mean the, yeah there is 250 cc but this is the first of the first four cylinder 350 cc you can imagine cylinders got to be like super tiny um i've had this for i'm pretty sure I'm for about 10 years now i got it after i got rid of a couple of my uh, other hondas i had a cb 400 t the twin model I had a CM450, I had a Bandit 400, um, a Suzuki XS750, the triple. Um, this is one of my favorite bikes that I plan on keeping forever. So I have this bike here, it's been parked for a good two years. Usually when I come visit, I'll started up and ride it but when i came here the tires were flat i just pumped it up right now pump it up with that with the <laughs> with the air pump tags are out too it's supposed to be done 23 i mean i did pay for it it's just that i don't have the sticker um batteries probably drain i got the k n airpods uh this is rejetted it's not the smoothest, but it does pull pretty hard. As you can see here, I got the I got the fuel drain here, but somehow it's still leaking, possibly from up here. Um, there's a story about this here, this super bad scrape that I encounter. I'll tell you about it at the end. Um, so all my cluster, everything up here has been taken off. Originally, yeah, this bike was 100% original. It's got the fender front and back. Um, it didn't have these AirPods. It had missing airbox, and all the covers were here. I mean, this was like a ghetto shop back then. I had a different seat too. I tried to cafe it out. That was sort of a thing to do <laughs> in like the 2010s, 12s. Um, I have these cheapy eBay style um, rabbit ears for the bucket headlight. This is original, by the way. Um, this bar here, it's also a uh, after marketing one that I found. So I will eventually have a chance to rebuild this. I do have a fresh red painted tank for this bike. I do plan on getting a full set of uh, exhaust manifold for this. This is actually off the CB400F, the 400 uh, model of this bike. Um, it has a four by one, four to one. See the four coming to one exit here. It is pretty scraped up, but that was the best I found back then for a decent price. I have a megaphone style exhaust that sounds pretty nice it is quite loud so i plan on getting a full system for this i did used to run a silencer for this but um i think i lost it and of course it's super loud out here in anaheim uh, i have the original drum brakes it's nothing modded there these cheapy aftermarketing um, shocks because the original ones were rusted out. Um, 
I might have to replace this ignition because I find the I can't find the key for this. Uh, this is a after marketing brake uh, reservoir for the handlebar that I got. I did run some uh, clip-ons before, and now I'm back to this. Uh, I don't know what the style is called. It's definitely not a cafe style. It's like a um, what's a name for this? It's the um, man. If anybody knows what that is, that is the style. Uh, the fender is off. I'm pretty sure I have those parts somewhere. But uh, this seat here, uh, it's after marketing that I picked up after the bike was dropped. And I lost my original seat, which was in really good condition too. And the story was that back in 2017, I was traveling around the country. That's what Project KOD was about. And it took uh, about five, six months of my life. I took off and we did a bit of traveling. And when I was out in the middle of nowhere, I was leaving Alabama, heading towards uh, New Orleans. I had this bike strapped on one of those uh, tow hitch uh, carrier, and it was doing great. I mean, I've already traveled like over 10 to 15 states from California up to Arizona, Utah, Montana, uh, Wyoming, Texas. Oklahoma, uh, Arkansas, and then Alabama, and I think I was heading towards Louisiana, but the problem was one of the straps blew off off of uh, this side, the right hand side, and I had two in the back, one in the f uh, two in the front. Basically, the carrier had like a ramp, and then there's like a crossbar here where I would run one here one over there in the back same thing but it gave out and the bike I was basically dragging the bike for about who knows how long I would say upwards of 20 to 30 minutes in the middle of nowhere darkness there was nowhere to pull off the only reason I found out is because uh, there was a forerunner that was on the road and it pretty much uh, was flashing its high beam at me but I was thinking, man, I'm in the middle of nowhere. Maybe this person's one of those crazies, just following people, flashing high beams so they could pull me over and do something crazy to me, but who knows? So anyways, um, I guess after a little while, my wife, she woke up and, cause I was blasting music, just trying to make it to uh, New Orleans that same night wasn't really paying attention. I didn't hear anything at all or spark. But after that car had high beamed me a few times and slowed down and sped up, I finally decided to exit off because I saw that the forerunner wasn't really chasing me. It kind of sped up and took off or, you know, so I exited out and the craziest thing, this bike was just on the floor like, like that, dragging and there was fuel everywhere on the tank. I'm surprised that it didn't blow up because it was from the gas tank and you see where the damage is all here. I was literally dragging on the floor. My seat was gone. My handlebar, my clip-on was all damaged. Um, yeah, I'm sure there was a few other parts. I think the, the kickstand was okay, but the, but the brick, not the brake lever, what's on the left? That's the shift lever on this side. It was all damaged too. So anyways, um, I had a extra strap, basically just did what I could best, middle of nowhere in the darkness in super humid weather. Me and my wife, we tied it up and we looked up the closest uh, Walmart and we slept there overnight and we found the strap. I mean, I went and bought a strap right away and strapped it back on and just slept in like super, super humid weather. We uh, spent the night there and then pretty much I woke up the next day and assessed the situation and saw all these damages here. So I was bummed out because this is original from uh, 1973 
the paint, everything that was on here was original. Um, this was damaged. The seat was gone. I was not able to ride it in Louisiana. That was one of my goal is to ride it in as most states as possible. I mean, I already rode it in many different states, but so from Louisiana to a couple other states after, like all the South, Southern states, I would say like Louisiana, uh, Georgia, Florida, South Carolina, all those, I didn't have a motorcycle to ride. We just rode around my scooter. And um, so that kind of killed my, uh, my dream to ride this in close to 50 states. So anyways, after that trip, we probably traveled to about 42 states and I put the bike back together at one of my um, um, buddy's house. And I pretty much taught my two other bud buddy uh, how to ride this bike here. And uh, yeah, I, I ordered a brand new seat to his house. The tank was okay, still functional. Got a new shifter, new handlebar. Pretty much just wanted to get it on the road again. And it was still running fine. There was no problem. I mean, the alignment was fine too. I mean, I think the tank took most of the damage. Um, so that's the story for that. Anyways, I was able to ride in the other states like South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, Maryland. I taught my cousin how to ride there rode up to uh, Maine, uh, New York, um, what are the states up there, like Rhode Island. So whichever state was, uh, I guess, convenient for me to just ride this thing around, I was able to ride that and put a decent miles on that. And the most annoying thing was loading this back up on the ramp in, uh, in our shuttle bus. Um, Anyways, my plan is to take this up to San Francisco and ride this across the Bay Bridge and the Golden Gate Bridge. So first thing I'm going to do is clean the carburetor, uh, get a new battery, two new tires front and back, and replace the tank. And then make sure all the wirings are clean. I want to hook the signals back on and see if I can find the fenders for that. And if I can't, that's okay. I mean, no fenders but I will at least have the signals, tank, and carbureted all ready to ride. Um, so that's pretty much the story with this bike. So um, that is one of my favorite bikes and it sounds amazing. And I think my other bike that I really loved a lot was the XS650, but I no longer have that bike. And, and this video is pretty much just dedicated to this uh, uh, CB350F. Um, if any of you know about this bike, they're not super rare, but they're pretty hard to find these days in good shape. And I plan on keeping this for a while, maybe eventually too, after putting it back to a good running condition, I will, uh, rebuild the whole thing, you know, do it, you know, hundred percent the way I want it to look. Um, anyways, yeah, if you like this video and you have any experience with your, uh, Hondas, the CB, um, I guess, first of their sports bike, cruisers, sport bikes, um, feel free to comment and let me know what you think of these bikes. And if you have one, I would like to know how you kept your bike in uh, good shape. So yeah, thanks for watching and uh, yeah, ride safe everyone.